got it all worked out You suddenly wonder what it's all about Think you're on solid ground Just a word and you're upside down That's love Oh, that's love That's love That's love What? And you aren't? My instructions for the ah, evening Thank job! Sorry <laughs> I love watching you make up. All the female artifice covering everything up. Not a bit like you really are. Is that a compliment or not? <laughs> You're so direct normally. When it suits me. You should have been a bloke, I think. Ah, yes, a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> now listen. I'm afraid this evening is going to be the most boring dinner party we've ever given. But it's necessary, so behave yourself. You realise I'm giving up the England-Denmark match on TV? Tape it. Merely to forward your career? Not merely to forward it, to forward it. We have two careers, remember? Oh, yeah. Anyway, only one of the couples is for my career, the other's for the children. They go and play there in the afternoons. They love it. What does he do? He's a software programmer. Oh, Don't you? <laughs> Very imaginative. He dreams up computer games and earns a fortune. I'll be sublime, I promise. Mm. Oh, God, they're early, too. <sighs> oh, do try, Gary, please. I'd like to be friends with these two. They're terrific. Well, are we? <laughs> well, don't worry, Olive can let them in. Now, the older couple are Colin and Beryl Glossop. She's a university lecturer in sociology. God preserve us. And he <laughs> is a caravan manufacturer <laughs> who's <laughs> just bought my designs for the interior of his new Mini Tourer. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, mm. for thousands, if it sells. Right. Serious faces for serious income. <laughs> oh, no. They're early, too. Oh. I'd better go down. Mm. Christ. <laughs> what? Now, don't let me get overexcited and spoil the evening, will you? <laughs> oh, champagne, lovely. Um, straight, thank you, Donald. Right. Here you are. Thank you. Gary. Okay. Top. Beryl. Bucks Fizz, thank you. Bucks Fizz? Um, I don't suppose you're interested in football, Donald. I am, as a matter of fact, Colin. Ah, yeah. good. I had the England-Denmark match on the car radio. Oh. I thought I was going to miss it coming Well, here. don't tell me the result. England was... got one. <laughs> <laughs> Three one. Denmark walked all over us. Oh, cheers. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was saying good night to the children. Oh, Hello, Colin. Nice to see you, Patsy. And your Beryl. Hello. Hello. What a lovely dress. Oh, thank you. So's yours. <laughs> oh, Turkish delight. How lovely. Hello, Amanda. How are you? Fine. Great. Good. This must be Gary. I'm afraid so. Hi. Well, um, do sit down, oh, everybody. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, darling. Oh, I'm afraid I brought you Turkish delight oh. as well. Oh. <laughs> How extraordinary. Isn't that funny, darling? It's incredible, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, Denmark beat England 3 1. Colin just told me. Sweet of him. Yeah. Um, that uh, business with the Turkish delight reminds me of a very funny story. <laughs> Do you remember the other evening, dear? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, will you tell them or shall I? Oh, you. <laughs> no, no, you do it best. Uh, oh. Well, it's a woman's story anyway. How about in unison? <laughs> <laughs> do go on, Beryl. I'm dying to hear. Oh, all right. Well, I was giving a little dinner party the other night, rather like this one, and I put the French bread in the oven to warm. So, we sat down to eat and, well, would you believe it? I forgot all about it and left it there. <laughs> Good heavens. Oh, no, 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 no. It was all right. 
The oven was very low. The French bread wasn't burnt at all. The point is, we didn't remember it till after the main course. And then I said, my God, I've forgotten the French bread. And you know, guess what? <laughs> we had to eat it with the cheese. <laughs> Show you someone else you can design caravans for. Be careful, someone will hear you. That's it. <laughs> I'm off now. Olive, don't do that. The children are fast asleep. Okay, have a nice evening. Oh, take me with you. It's a keep fit class. <laughs> what a choice. Go on, take that in. Oh, how about if I got a game of charades going? Oh, just go in there and be charming. Okay. Oh, but um, don't leave the French bread in the oven, for God's sake. <laughs> Anything could happen. Yes, indeed. Well done, darling. <laughs> right. Now, I think this is the moment to really get things into orbit. Let's all play a game. Darling. Confessions. <laughs> Confessions. We must all confess something. Darling, nobody I wants... know, I know. How we all lost our virginity. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> My department at the university is doing a statistical survey on premarital sexual activity among teenagers in the early 20s. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> Do you agree, darling? Mm. Sensational stuff. Mm. Well, Patsy, as you are the hostess, don't you think you should get us all started? Oh, I wouldn't want to get in the way of male egotism, darling. You must be longing to tell <laughs> first. <laughs> but anyway, Yours was so funny, wasn't it? <laughs> now, let Amanda go first, because her story is really great. I mean, it is really funny. Isn't it wonderful to be with? Go on, Amanda, go for it. All right. I was just 19. 19? You've skipped a few, haven't you? Well, I don't count the first five, because I didn't enjoy it with them. <laughs> like now, really. <laughs> well, Patsy, as you are the hostess, I think you'd better kick off. Uh, All right, Lord and Master, whatever you say. Well, I led a sheltered life till at 21 I walked down the aisle in yards of white lace and tulle, and then, that night, Donald made it all shooting stars oh. and moonbeams. Oh. I didn't know anything could Boom. be so beautiful. <laughs> Chicken, not fair. Very good, I approve of that. Yes. <laughs> it isn't that unlikely a story. <laughs> Statistically, I'm afraid it is, my dear. Even when Colin and I got married in the early 50s, not that many brides were virgins. Oh, we all claim to be. But statistics show that only 27% really were. And you were one of that 27%, dearest. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm right. Mind you, mind you, we chaps were more experienced. Yes, well, we girls expected that then. Oh, rather. <laughs> Although, in truth, the comparative figures for premarital sexual experience for either sex were and are fairly level, really. You see, girls lie about their innocence and boys about their experience, didn't you, dear? <laughs> well, now, light cheese. Will anyone like a light cheese? Oh, yes, thank in? you, Patsy. Yes, yes, very nice. <laughs> of course, <clears throat> your story about your, um, 
legally sanctioned deflowerment. Mm. Oh, so delightful, most amusing. But it is a lovely sign of the times that you weren't even expecting to be believed. Oh? Even the pretense of chastity is extinct. The interesting problem for a girl nowadays is just how many previous affairs does she admit to? Well, what's the problem? Just be honest with each other, then who cares about numbers? <coughs> ah, you ignore male chauvinism. Oh. Not all men are as liberal-minded as I'm sure you are. <laughs> yeah, don't forget, Prince Charles searched the length and breadth of the kingdom for a spotless virgin. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wouldn't have wanted a spotty one, would he? <laughs> <laughs> Donald couldn't wait to brag about his long, boring list of conquests. Him too. The double standard. Oh, rub it. Look, that sort of thing went out with the R. <laughs> oh, no, it didn't. OK, Beryl. So what have you sociologists decided Miss 1980s can now admit to? Well, our figures show that the most popular cover story that girls currently use is, funnily enough, a very old one. The tart standby. <laughs> the tart standby? <laughs> What's that, Bell? <laughs> oh, it was used by every whore in 19th century French literature. I have only had two <laughs> lovers before you, my darling. There was the brute who took away my honor one night when I was drunk, and the young boy who was my first true love. <laughs> Monsieur Balzac and de Maupassant really knew their onions. <laughs> oh, I love her fractured franglais, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> There you are. You actually lied. I actually lied. Mm. About your two men before me. That's right. Mm. I can't believe it. You just said that. <laughs> so there were more than two. Well, there wouldn't be less, would there? <laughs> are you joking? Do I look it? But you lied. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? I've never seen you pompous before. Who's being pompous? <laughs> I fail to see what is funny. Yes. You take that. <laughs> Come on. I can't believe it. <laughs> Come off it, Donald. The needle's stuck. <laughs> Have you ever lied? No. <laughs> Not about something important like that. I did it out of concern for your feelings. Rubbish. When you lie to someone you love, it's because you've decided either you're too scared to tell them the truth or they're not fit to know it. It's cowardice or arrogance. Or love. Hmm. The trouble was, you didn't know the old story. What's that? The one what's-the-name told us. Beryl. Beryl. Hmm. What every woman in history has said. How many men? Two. But why two? It sounds better than 102, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, relax. <laughs> Listen, you can't say none, can you? A girl can't be attractive 21 and still a virgin, can she? That's not chastity, it's stinginess. <laughs> <laughs> and one's pushing it a bit, so it's always the one who took away my virginity one night when I was drunk and my first love. That's standard. Two is moderate, discreet, and credible. <laughs> Didn't any other girl ever tell you two? I always believe them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, wouldn't you just? <laughs> when I said two, I thought you'd die laughing. What's so funny about a number? Nothing, I suppose. I believed you. Yes. When you took it seriously, I was amazed. <laughs> you looked so... well... Silly, really. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, but lovely silly. Hadn't got the heart to wipe that soppy grin off your face. Thank you. 
You're right. So, um, how many was it then? <laughs> well? Oh. Oh, sorry. I thought you were in bed. No, no, not yet. I came as quietly as I could. Yes, we didn't hear you. Nice dinner party? Yes, lovely, thanks. The keep fit class was a killer. I just, I should think I put all the weight back on down at the pub. <laughs> well, I'll be off to bed then. Yes, we were just going. Good night, Olive. Put the lights out after you. Well. So, how many was it? <laughs> <laughs> Darling, this is silly. I should never have brought the subject up. Oh, you didn't bring it up. You blew it in public. Oh, yes. <laughs> So, how many? You know, it isn't the lie that's bothering you under that righteous exterior. It's good old masculine possessiveness. Is all this just a wind-up? Then you'll say three, so I'll feel relieved. <laughs> <laughs> relieved? Oh, that's an interesting reaction. I didn't mean that exactly. Oh, but I... you did, exactly. And anyway, you said this evening the actual number didn't matter at all. It doesn't. But trust does. And there's still that persistent, boring, old-fashioned double standard. The chap that's humped every girl in the district is one hell of a fella. <laughs> and the girl that's done the same is still the village bicycle. Well, did I marry the village bicycle? <laughs> or did you just loan yourself out for the occasional ride? <laughs> How many? Rides? No. <laughs> Cyclists. <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> Seventeen. 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 Seventeen! Don't booming seventeen. Seventeen! Seventeen's not that many. It's fifteen more than two. Oh. It's an entire rugger team. Well, how many women did you have before we met? I don't know, not. Well, then. But you knew I told you. Most, did you mean? I didn't lie, did I? I don't know. Anyway. I was older than you, I had more time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but I made a really sophisticated, cultural, literary French joke about myself, and you took it seriously. Oh, of course. It's all my fault, isn't it? I should have collapsed into uncontrollable guffaws at the bizarre idea of a pretty girl of 21 only had two fellas. Hmm? And then you would have tenderly murmured the magic number, 17. <laughs> With misty eyes, I would have answered, oh, only 17. Oh, darling, how wonderful. You've been saving yourself. <laughs> Telling you two was a ghastly error. Yeah, it was an error of 850%. <laughs> what an extraordinary moment for statistics. Only it wasn't an error, was it? It was a bloody lie. That doesn't sound right. What doesn't? An 850% error. Oh, look, 8 to the 16. No. 750%. <laughs> look, 8 twos. Ah, oh, 16, right? <laughs> 16 and 1 makes 17. Yes, I know that. Yes, well, the odd one is the odd 50%. Yes, 850%. I know. I know all that. Gosh, thanks. 17 is 8 and a half yes. times 2, yes. Yes. But it does not make an 850%. It error. does. No, look. <laughs> You've always got to take 1 away. Yes. 2 is twice 1, but it's only a 100% <laughs> error. Do you see? Yes. <laughs> 2 is twice 1. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right. So, I was right. 750% error. Lie. You were exaggerating. Oh, dear, sorry. And anyway, I lost my virginity when I was 16, right? So? Younger than when you did. So? And 16 to 21 is five years, and 17 fellas in five years isn't that many. What? <laughs> Sad, <laughs> but it's only... Three and two-fifths fellas a year. What? <laughs> three and two-fifths fellas a year isn't bad by anyone's standards. Three and two-fifths? Less than one every three months. <laughs> it's practically total abstinence. <laughs> practically total... <coughs> I don't believe this whole conversation. We're not having it. How the hell do you get screwed by two-fifths of a fella? <laughs> <laughs> So, 
that bad, is it? You've spoiled everything. <laughs> Bitter words. Bitter facts. The most important thing we did together was to get married. From that grew all this. The children. Everything. All built on a lie. Well, I've said I'm sorry in 12 different positions. What more can I do? I wish I hadn't found out. Oh, I do. But it all happened years ago before we met. Yes, but because I've just found out, it feels as though you've just done it. <laughs> ah, I see. Well, so what do you want then, a divorce? It's unthinkable, isn't it? Uh, yes. But how else do I deal with it other than to wipe the slate clean and start again? Well, you could just forgive and forget. Hmm. You know I've got the memory of an elephant. <laughs> well, you haven't given the wounds much of a chance to heal yet, have you? <laughs> Healing them won't remove them. All right, then. You're right. There's no alternative to the unthinkable. Let's divorce. What? Well, I won't get into the nitty-gritty of who has the house, who has the children and all that, because we both know a judge would give the lot to me. Oh, it's blackmail now, is it? Oh, yes. Come to heal, or I'll take all this away from no. you. No. What I was about to say was we can dispense with all that. I mean, we could have a do-it-yourself quickie. <laughs> we both like the house, so let's both stay here for our own sake. And the children need both of us, so let's both stay for their sakes. We could do it the Muslim way. Oh, we say three times I divorce thee and that's it. No need for all that legal paraphernalia. <laughs> Don't be silly. Oh, surely we're above all that. So, <clears throat> I divorce thee, I divorce thee, I divorce thee. There you are. Thank you. I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. You coming? You never know. An accidental touch under the sheets. You might get lucky. <laughs> it's more fun when it's not legal. Hmm. <laughs> if you can make it a game, you can handle it, can't you? Oh, I'm making it a game because I can't ha... What's that? <laughs> Your address book. <laughs> Diary, what are they doing out here? I was looking at them. What? <laughs> I was going through the old entries in your address book, trying to guess who the 17 are. <laughs> but you can't go through my things, they're private. Uh, they were when I trusted you. How dare you? Really, that's what suspicious wives do, go through pockets when their husbands are asleep. That's right. Well, a sexual egalitarian like you wouldn't deny me the right that wives have practiced since trousers were invented, would you? Right, I'm not having that. You sound just like a man. Oh, this is intolerable. Yes, dear, you're so masterful, dear. Right. I'm going to bed, and it's not an invitation. Absolutely, and I'm coming too. If you lay one finger on me, I'll scream the house down. All over nothing, the past. Exactly. Jealousy's a funny thing, isn't it? Foul. Good night. Night. No, not yet. <laughs> oh, to hell with it. That's not At the same time next week, Donald accepts that he's been chauvinistic and juvenile, and the way to deal with it is to get drunk. In just a couple of minutes tonight, Judy Lowe stars with Paul Freeman in Yesterday's Dreams, but it's Matthew who instigates a showdown. <laughs>